So with that said, I'd like to uh, welcome Alan March and Skylar Miller, Delhi Township Administrator, here to explain what's going on. Thanks, Pete. I'm going to see if I can see if Ray can train me to do this. It worked. Wow. Can everybody hear me? Yeah. I'm bring this down a little bit. Yeah. And remind me, Ray, where the laser trigger is. Right in the middle. In the middle. Ooh. Very good. So from Family Farm to the Delhi Town Square, the Family Farm is the Hinefeld Farm. Does anybody here not know of that being the Hinefeld Farm? Youngsters. <laughs> All right. So this is going to be a two-part program. I'm going to tell you a bit of the history of that location, and then I'm going to hand it off to uh, Skylar Miller, who is the township administrator. He's going to tell you about the future of the property. So this is an 1869 map. It's one of my favorite maps that we have. It's not the earliest map of Delhi, but I think it's one of the better ones. This one shows Delhi Township before it got eaten up by annexations. Across the top here, here's Green Township. So Paul Ruffin, you're up here somewhere. Here's Storrs Township, Sedansville. Right here, this is Riverside. That ended up getting annexed by the city of Cincinnati, but yeah, it was part of Delhi Township. All the way up here is Miami Township. Part of that got gobbled up too when the city gobbled all the way up along the river through industry, Delhi, home city, and they got Fernbank. The reason I like to show this is because it shows, this is Cleves Warsaw that divides Green and Delhi. This neighborhood here is Warsaw. It's now West Price Hill. That was Delhi. And this is the rapid run pike going down to Sailor Park. And here is Delhi Pike. And you see this little dip here. That is, that is Mount Alverno Road. So that's where we're going to go visit next. This is the 1869 map, zoomed in a little bit. So here again we have Delhi Pike. This is Mount Alverno Road. And if you can read it here, it says Greenwell. This is where Greenwell Road will eventually be built. This is the Peter Williams estate. This is William Williams. The Williamses owned a huge chunk of Delhi. And if on Anderson Ferry Road, close across the street from where the farm is, roughly, there's still a, a big old white house there. That's the, one of the oldest houses in Delhi, and that was owned by the Williams. If you ever look through the old city directories of the city of Cincinnati in the area, that was published by the Williams family. That's where they made their money. That red triangle, or rectangle there, that's the property we're going to look at. That's where the Hinefeld family bought the property. 1914 map, again, we'll, here's Delhi Pike, Mount Alverno Road, and now Greenwell is actually in place. So right here is the Hinefeld Farm. Zoomed in a little bit. So it's kind of on the western portion of the Williams property. It's probably too far for you to read. It says 19.95, just shy of 20 acres. So this property, 20 acres of property is what's got developed over the years. The Hinefelds were farmers. There were a couple different families, uh, branches of the Hinefelds. These, these Hinefelds here, they were farmers, produced produce, vegetables. They became so good at it, they had to buy produce coming from other farms as well. They were very good retailers, good business people. So they were actually importing some of their stuff, but they were always growing as well. Out west on Rapid Run, there was a Hinefeld branch of the family. There were florists and there were greenhouses there. I don't think they stand anymore. And another branch of the Hinefelds became an industrialist, and they were making uh, ovens, cast iron ovens. And if you go down to Spring Grove Avenue, close to where Marshall Avenue is, there's a historic plaque, State of Ohio historic plaque. It says where the first glass door oven was invented. So there's a pig staring at it, too. There's what? A pig staring at it. Oh, from, on the sidewalk? The mm -hmm. it's, a, it's almost like you can look out the oven door. <laughs> very good. So the Hinefelds were very important to the area. Fast 
exporting a little bit because I want to keep this program moving. This is some of their produce, actually, obviously pumpkins. This photograph's from about 1973, uh, Cincinnati Post. The Hinefelds were known for their selling of pumpkins and Christmas trees, and I really love, just love this photograph because it, it tells the story so well. This is, uh, this little girl's two and a half years old. Her last name is Campbell. Do we have any Campbells in here? No, okay. I was just wondering if we might have a family member. She was from Sedansville. So a lot of people remember getting their Halloween pumpkins there. <clears throat> and their Christmas trees. This came from the uh, township newspaper, which was produced by Dusty Rhodes and Jerry Lubers in the 1970s. And it was, uh, so Hina felt it. I think they were very good businessmen. This is a great ad. It, it tells you all about it. The Christmas trees, the different things you can do to get to decorate your home for Christmas. But a couple of other things, too. It says it's a big parking lot, plenty of parking. This ad's from the 1960s. Delhi has been getting urbanized over the years, particularly after World War II. Delhi was a rural neighborhood, rural township, but after the war, because of the baby boom, all the men coming back from the war, having families, having kids, the value of the land was no, not so much to produce food, but as to create housing. So the farms were getting developed. People were buying cars, and they needed places to park their cars. And Hinefelds were recognizing that. They say plenty of parking. And I like the landmark that they say here, at the big white barn. Now this is a painting we have in our collections at Delhi Historical Society. And it's an acrylic on a sheet of plastic. I find it very interesting. And on the far left there, you see the big white barn. In the back and the center, there, it's a smaller outbuilding. But on the right there, that is the family house. So this gives you a little bit of a perspective as to what the Hinefeld farm looked like. But remember, they had 20 acres, so this is just a small part. And you're looking at it as if you were standing on Delhi Pike. To the right of that tree is Columbia Road. So here's the big white barn. Doors open, obviously summertime here. And if, you could, if it's a little bit clearer, you can see some bushes. They have some red flowers on them. We believe those are rose bushes. This one might look more familiar if you were buying Christmas trees. The barn door is closed, but on the barn itself there are wreaths. And these white posts here, they're supporting lights. They're getting ready to have the Christmas trees set up for display. Anybody here buy the Christmas trees there? Again, these are, these are from our collections. That, that's, this uh, program is illustrated primarily from our collections. Except for this photo, which came from, from the Cincinnati Post as well, 1973. It used to be so peaceful in the country. I love this. On the left there, you see the Hinefeld farm. The barn is on the far left. In the distance there, this is the farmhouse itself. But here's the big white barn. But right across the street, in the text here, they narrate, this is a nice, peaceful, rural look. But what's this farm doing in this urbanized area? It says China here. There's Chinatown. There's a Kroger sign. It says liberal. That was the liberal savings and loan. Four years earlier, it was the Cabinet Supreme savings and loan. Same right across the street. The whole story was the Hinefelds had been holding out. The value of the property along Delhi Pike and throughout Delhi had been going up for commercial development, but they had been holding out. In fact, in this story, the family had had told the story that a lot of people had asked if they could sell the farm. They weren't really interested, but one real estate agent said, "If I bring you the right offer, would you do it?" They said, "We'd listen to it." Well, apparently somebody came up with the right offer. It's called the Delco Development Company. But first, before they would buy it, they had to get the zoning changed. They weren't going to buy the property unless they could develop it and build it. So this is an announcement of the property zoning hearing. It was going to be held at the township hall. And you see it says 5043 Delhi Pike. That was the address of the farm itself. December 4th, 1973, there was the meeting, 
and some people weren't happy about it. The Hamilton County uh, Regional Planning Commission held the meeting. 200 people crammed into the township hall, and I, I love these words here. They say they were vociferous and antagonistic. <laughs> some people were not happy about the property becoming a commercial development. They asked for a show of hands, and only 15 people, including the owners, so there are about four or five Hinefelds there, some lawyers, and actually some people from Delco Development from New York, New York City, were there. They were the only ones who raised their hands and said, yeah, we approve of it. But why were people objecting? Because Delco Development was the parent company for Zare. Zare was a uh, discount department store like Kmart, Gold Circle, uh, target today and people didn't want that because this was the placement if you can see here right here is Delhi Pike here's Mount Alverno Verno Road this is Clemmy so this is the 20 acres and this is what the developers figured here's a supermarket here like a Kroger several stores here a bank here a restaurant it says restaurant alternative. This is not to be announced. Who knows what they were thinking of putting it there. There's a theater, other stores, and here's the big department store. This is where the Zare was going to go, facing south on Mount Alverno Road. While the people that lived on the south side of Mount Alverno Road didn't want to look at a department store right across the street. Looking out their living room windows and seeing that, having all the traffic coming through here, cars coming in and out. There were no houses on the north side of Mount Alverno at the time. When these people moved in in the 60s, they wanted this nice, quiet, rural, suburban feel. Now they were having this all coming up here, and they were objecting to it. And I really applaud them for this. This is the community in action. They have a zoning meeting, and everybody's welcome to come, and these people attended. So after two weeks, they changed the plans. They were listening to the community. Key among the, the changes were they're moving the store 200 feet north. So no longer would the store be right on Mount Alverno. They're moving it 200 feet further north so there would be a buffer there. But in addition to that, there was going to be a tree and shrub buffer hiding the stores. So they're going to use some natural fencing to protect the views of the people. So Edwin Wesselman, who was a representative of the Property Owners Association, he said with those changes, they would not object. So I, I really think this is a great bit of community involvement. So once the, they said they would sell it, get the zoning changed, the demolition began. This is the only color picture we're aware of where they began the demolition. The barn is gone, it was right here. This is Delhi Pike here. This radio tower here, that's behind uh, O'Reilly's today. But here's the farmhouse, it's still here. Here's a crane, they were using it to demolish it. All the land is already cleared. You'll see several more photos here of the land being cleared. Clemmy Road here, so the photographer's back is at Delhi Pike. These are the houses on Mount Alverno Road. We'll zoom in on that a little bit. So you can see these houses. You're looking at the north sides of the houses. These are the living rooms, the fronts of the houses, and they're looking across this vast waste land that has been cleared. But they had to do it. They had to level the property. And you see these, I guess these are probably 48 inch culverts for stormwater management and other utilities. Here's another view, and I'm just going to zoom in on this right now. This is Clemmy Road. There's still a couple of these houses left. Photographer's back is to Mount Alverno. Up here is Delhi Pike. And this is the Kumo restaurant. Back then it was Sambo's. And if you look at the photo real close, you can read Sambo's. Again, with the photographer's back to Mount Alverno, Clemmy Road. Clemmy Road's here on the right. Delhi Pike, Spring Garden Savings and Loan. Here's the water tower over uh, on Covedale. Here's the McDonald's where I worked in 1976. <laughs> and a little bit more 
This is Spring Garden Savings and Loan, the water tower again. This was the Tressler Comet Station that had a free car wash here. So you can see that it completely changed the land and the property. So after all that, this is what they got. We've got a, a series of aerial views of Delhi Township thanks to John Schill and his father. He took these photos uh, in a helicopter. And uh, I just think it's a great survey. It's about 19, what was it, 75 or 6? 78. 78, okay. So the development's been finished for a while. This is Mount Alverno Road here. This is the Kmart. This is Kroger, moved across the street. They found better turf. Here's the bank, as they proposed, Southern Ohio Bank, which no longer exists. And this is the friendly restaurant. Oh, yes. You know what's there now, right? That's Wild Mike's. That's right. Here's a slightly different view from the northeast. Here's the front. Again, Mount Alverno. A lot of people here, so obviously it was a needed and wanted retail site. And I like this because it shows the berm here, so a lot of the greenery has not grown yet, but there's a lot more space between the store and Mount Alverno. And actually, the store is now facing Delhi Pike instead of Mount Alverno. Eventually, this will be built up with houses in the 70s. <coughs> After about 20 some odd years, Kmart said they're going to renovate this. We've got these plans here. That's why I like to show it. But Kmart was a huge retail retailer in the United States, founded in 1899 by Sebastian S. Kresge. He had Kresge stores, and we all remember those. Well, those of us of a certain age. Became Kmart. The corporation became a Kmart corporation in the 1970s. And by 1997, they're saying, we're revamping, updating. They're keeping up with the competition. And you can't see this detail, unfortunately, but every shelf, every fixture is accounted for. So this was the landscaping. This was the automotive. I bought a lot of parts here when I was growing up. Here's the, the cash registers here. This was the front of the Kmart that they were going to demolition. You can see the Kmart sign. They were changing the concept. They're calling it the big Kmart, so they thought they would bring in a lot more customers. This is the way it was, it was going to look. I don't have an after photo of this, unfortunately. By 2002, Kmart filed for bankruptcy. They started closing stores. They closed our store in, in uh, 2003. Biggs had been in town for a while, and they started gobbling up other sites. They said, that's a great store. We want it. We're going to develop it. And they bought it within less than a year. They moved in there, and Biggs was there for quite a while. They ended up having six stores in Cincinnati. By 2010, though, all six stores got sold to Remke's. Remke's it was a grocery store based in northern Kentucky, and they were growing, and they started gobbling up, too. However, eight years later, Remke's closed. So this place, after the Hinefelds had been there for generations, it kept getting turned over and turned over. Nobody likes to have an empty space on their main thoroughfare in the township, particularly the township uh, administrators. So they started thinking, we had to do something. This is in 2020 is when they actually put, put the, made it public. They are looking to hire a manager to build a recreational area, Township administrative office, cultural arts and classroom space, an outdoor amenity such as a, uh, a stage or something like that. They had big plans as early as 2020, and actually it was earlier than that. And it began to come to fruition when they started tearing the place down. Again, these are some aerial views. The Shields did not provide these. This came from a contractor who was uh, bidding on the, the job of the demolition. And I like seeing this because it looks like Godzilla stomped on this thing here. <laughs> so here, here's Mount Alverno, Delhi Pike is right here, Clunny Road's here. So you've got, you've got the three out lots there. It's a bit of a wide view. Here's Delhi Pike again. You can see Delhi Park. There's Clearview Lake. The library is way up here. Here's Mount Alverno again. Now you can see these houses that were built. But when they were built, they could be built because 
the citizens of the southern side of Mount Alverno objected to the store being right on the road. That's where all these houses came from. And one last look at Mount Alverno here as Godzilla is about finished chewing on the building. So Jack Cameron, who was the township administrator, he had a vision along with the rest of the township trustees. They wanted to do something permanent. They wanted to show that the township was invested in this property. And they came up with this plan. And part of it, it was a lot of community input. And I think one of the ultimate parts of the community input was they were listening, just like the zoning people were listening back in 1973. And the result is the project you're going to hear about in a little bit. Here's when they had the formal groundbreaking. Everybody's under the big tent. The community was invited. And you can see the hard hats here, so you figure there's going to be some danger. These are, these are the township trustees here, and they're doing the ceremonial groundbreaking. It was all pavement here, so they imported some topsoil so it would be easier to dig. <laughs> and I am proud to say that the Delhi Historical Society's Board of Directors was also chosen to be part of the ceremonial groundbreaking. So that's very cool. We, we've been a part of this. So now I'd like to bring in Skylar Miller of the uh, Delhi Township Administrator. All right. Good evening, everybody. How are we tonight? Good. All right. Uh, well, it's my pleasure to be in front of you tonight. Uh, that was an amazing <coughs> walk through history. So hopefully I can show you the future. All right. All right, I am going to back up a little bit, though. Uh, plan the Pike. This was a study that was commissioned by the township trustees, I believe, in 2015, completed in 2016. I bring this up because this is uh, maybe not the first time that development by the township was brought up on the Pike, but it's certainly um, what I would consider the genesis of, of Delhi Town Square. So uh, the first thing... <clears throat> there were a couple of, uh, of uh, implementation or development objectives that came out of Plan the Pike. Uh, on the residential side, uh, there was uh, identified a need for new single family homes, uh, also attached single family homes, so think condos or owner occupied, um, uh, owner occupied townhome style. All right, and then finally, modern. Uh, modern multifamily apartments, okay? And then from general development standpoint, uh, we were looking to implement catalytic development. So uh, there was a need for uh, a mixed use uh, center that could be uh, you know, kind of a focal point activity center for, for the township. And the idea is, is that if the township would invest in an anchor site along the pike that it would be catalytic or it would push um, or it would drive additional development. Okay? So three anchor, uh, th excuse me, three anchor sites were identified uh, along the pike. Uh, there is, can't really, having a hard time reading these tonight, sorry about that. Uh, of the three, yeah, of the three, uh, number two, the Remke Plaza, was identified as the largest and with the highest potential. So when that property came up for sale, uh, there were some rumors about what that was potentially going to be developed as, and you know the vision of the trustees at the time was to pick that up um, and to you know uh, better utilize it for uh, for the township. So again, 2015 was the planning study. Uh, in 2020, there were community forums and focus groups that were launched. Um, they brought on private partners in 2021, and in 2022, we uh, excuse me, we began construction. So uh, we hope to have uh, we hope to have the site fully open to the public by June of 24. Okay. So this is one of the early renderings of Delhi Town Square. This is looking at the lawn area, so it's kind of the very center of the site. And I'm happy to report that, you know, uh, we're, we're staying very close to, to the vision. Okay, just another shot of that. This one, uh, so this site, you still have the, uh, the stage at the, at the south end. 
this is a, a concession area or patio bar. Uh, on either side of the lawn, uh, you have uh, the, the new apartments, and anchored at the south side is, is Delhi Town Square, the big multi-use building. So this is just another shot. This is from the south end of the lawn, uh, looking west towards Clemmy. Excuse me, looking east towards Clemmy. This is a better view. Uh, so Delhi Town Square, the, 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 the township building, is a 90,000 square foot mixed use facility. Okay? So we'll break this up a little bit more. This is another shot of the lawn. Uh, so the pike is up here. You have um, what was originally called the Esplanade, but now the lawn. Uh, so you have a southbound lane and a northbound lane on this loop. Uh, you have this recreation area down the center. All of this is about an acre in size at the very center. Stage at the south. There's a couple of shots <laughs> during construction. So this is going to be, gosh, this is actually pretty recent, I would say, since we have both of these up. So this was probably um, fall or maybe even winter of 23. So. One thing I want to show you on this, uh, we talked about the farm being almost 20 acres in size, okay? The, uh, what is now Delhi Town Square is just under 15 acres. So um, we've picked up a little bit of land here to the south. This is actually Clemmy right here. Uh, so this wasn't part of the original farm, but it is part of our parking area. Mount Averno to the south right here. So those houses right there. And we're not counting these outlots as part of that uh, part of that acreage. Okay. South side of the building. Uh, this is actually um, this is actually the front of the the public building. Okay. Uh, all of the main entrances uh, are accessed through the through the south side. Over here, you've got the entrance to uh, the Oak Hills Pre K. This is the entrance to. Uh, the township administration spaces, as well as the first floor uh, entrance to the larger cultural arts center. We have a leasable space here on the first floor, excuse me, right, right there, about 7,000 square feet of leasable space. This is still undeveloped. We're working with uh, multiple possible tenants right now to design that. And then the other side is roughly a 45,000 square foot recreation center um, or athletic club. So it's two stories. It has uh, lockers on the first floor, uh, you know, bathrooms to get over to the pool area, this natatorium. There's two pools in that area. And then the second floor has the main fitness floor as well as fitness classrooms. This is just another schematic. Uh, it's actually flipped. So this is the south side here. And you can kind of see how those spaces are broken up. Uh, there's also a playground that's dedicated for Oak Hills. And now I'm going to kind of dive into each one of those sides. The, uh, this yellow area is for, is for Oak Hills. Uh, as part of this larger public-private partnership, uh, the schools, uh, Oak Hills and Delhi Township, um, have made an agreement on uh, the tax settlement for this property. So Oak Hills will not be collecting any tax revenue off of this site. In return, they have a 30-year lease uh, in, on this, in this building for pre-K, as well as use of the pool area. So they have four pre-K classrooms. They're going to be operating AM and PM classes. Uh, so we're going to serve about 200 students a day during the school year. This is an earlier drawing. It's, there's a slight revision here, but this, this teal area, or turquoise, whatever, is the township admin spaces. We are now going to be combining the administration, community development, and parks and rec all under one roof. So all of those services that um, residents kind of, you know, would, uh, would reach out and use on a, on a regular basis uh, will all be under one roof. So if it's not police and fire, you're gonna you're gonna come here for it. Okay. This is on the other side. This green area is the leasable space. Again, that's 7,000 square feet. I actually just took a uh, a number of 
township business owners who are there today, all looking at possibly expanding their businesses. This is the first part of the, uh, the athletic club. Uh, this is where their administration offices is, men and women's members um, locker rooms. Uh, they have day use lockers, uh, you know, your general bathroom, showers, dry saunas, all housed in this area. And then you walk down this main corridor and the kind of anchor of this, this whole facility is a eight lane competition pool. Uh, this was part of the, uh, the focus group looking at the different um, you know, amenities that were desired for our community and a, a competition pool was uh, at certainly at the top of the list. So again, eight lane, this is high school and collegiate uh, regulation size. It also has uh, a diving well right here. So there's two diving platforms uh, also for competition. It's also the regulation depth for water polo. I don't know how you get the horses in though. <laughs> also here in a kind of a separate swimming bay is a warm water pool. So that warm water pool, it's the same style construction but on a smaller scale. That is a 20 by 60 pool. So there we can do, um, you know, aquatics classes, swimming classes, um, you know, group therapy. So lots of different options. All of this will be available to the public on a membership basis. And then we are also working with Oak Hills uh, to have competitions here, as well as opening this up to other schools in the area. I've taken um, Seton, Elder, Mount St. Joe, all through. They would have to have individual agreements with us to, to use that, but we're certainly open to it. Okay. We go up to the second floor, so back to the other side of the building. This is what we're calling the Cultural Arts Center. So there's a corridor. So you start on the first floor, walk your way up, you come up these stairs, and here is going to be the, the gallery. So the township envisions this as kind of a rotating art gallery full of you know, different, uh, different pieces from our community. Uh, it, could, it could feature one of our schools. It could feature our community groups. Uh, it could be from the classrooms up here. We have five community classrooms, um, with one of them having a, uh, a teaching kitchen or learning kitchen. Okay, it's not a commercial kitchen, but uh, we can actually have you know uh, cooking classes up here. We have two other art classes here, another general purpose classroom, and then right here is our uh, township computer lab and business center. And those these will all be staffed. Uh, let's see here. So moving over into this light blue area, this is kind of a continuation of that gallery, and this area is overlooking that lawn. So you see those big windows as you drive by. So where those, um, uh, you know, the big ball lights are right now. Okay, so that's that area right now. There are glass garage doors right here, looking into our 374 seat meeting room and banquet hall, okay? So we can have we could have a meeting like this on just a much larger scale. And I look forward to the day when uh, the Historical Society is filling that room for their presentations. Wow. Yeah. So you guys gotta get some good topics for us. <laughs> yeah, I like this. This will also be the new home of the Township Trustees. We have a new dais that's being built. It's kind of built into an alcove over here. And, um, when not in use, we can wall that up, and this is also a banquet uh, room. So this could house, you know, a reception, or, uh, banquet style with round tables, about 280 people maxed out. Okay. On the other side of the building, so this takes you back over to the second floor of the fitness center. Okay, you come up these stairs from the corridor, very similar in layout to the other side of the building. If you turn over here, there's fitness classrooms. We have a bike studio. So this is where uh, you're going to come and cycle your heart out. In that room is a 10 by 10 um, foot video wall. So as you're biking, you're not just you're not just biking to an instructor. You might be biking through the Swiss Alps, or maybe you're on the Tour de France. Okay. 
Over here, you have a, uh, a yoga studio. Um, not hot studio, I don't think, hot yoga. I think we'll do Pilates, bar, that, that type of thing. And then finally, the largest main studio is a dance and aerobics room. That has a wood floating floor, uh, windows on the side. Uh, that'll be, again, aerobics, dance, uh, possibly martial arts instruction. You know, it's whatever the community wants. Okay. Going back to this main hallway, we have the largest area. This is the main fitness floor. This area here is where you're going to have all of your cardio equipment, your cable machines, your free weights. On the north end of that is actually a turf field. That turf field is going to house all your dynamic uh, exercises, your battle ropes, your, you know, your weight sleds, that type of thing. And then this space isn't, uh, isn't missed out on it either. So we'll have uh, stretching, um, stretching stations through here, again, looking out over that lawn. This is all the second, uh, you know, this is the pool area. So there's windows all through here looking out over those pools. Okay. So we have a grand opening vision. So we are looking uh, to have this whole site open to the public, hopefully by June 1st. Okay. Uh, so we kind of envision a big community gathering out on the lawn, open up the building to, you know, for the public to see. All right, and that is that is where we stand now. I'm happy to answer any questions, and I do have some backup slides if if we get into some other questions. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Are you going to be taking silver sneakers or any of those senior citizens things in your pools or exercises? Uh, there is a senior discount for membership. Uh, at this time, we do not plan. We do not plan on taking silver sneakers initially. So, uh, one of the things that the township looked at uh, was who would we be competing against, and more importantly, complementing in the community. Bailey is a big member of our community. We wanted to respect them uh, and their operations. I know they, um, you know, they rely heavily on silver sneakers. It's not a, you know, it's not a space that we definitely need to compete in. Yes, ma'am. What about the living quarters, the apartments and the condos? And yep. Let's see. So I know I focused, you know, a big part of what I focused on, I know, was our, was our main building. But <clears throat> there are five, uh, let's see, five buildings. Those are all owned by PLK. PLK is our private partner in this endeavor. Uh, PLK is, is doing a land lease with the township, so there's fixed annual payments uh, that go to the township for, for that space. We are, uh, in order for the township to collect revenue, we're not relying on occupancy, in case anybody's worried about that. But there are 180 units uh, in those apartments. It's a mix of one, two, and three bedroom. I think there's seven different floor plans, uh, 276 uh, 276 bedrooms, all told. Now the first building, building one right here, that just received its CO, its Certificate of Occupancy. Our first tenants uh, arrived February 9th? Yep. Last Friday. Last Friday. So uh, we tried to, we wanted to get a shot of the first residence, but uh, uh, PLK likes to protect the um, the privacy of his residence, so we don't have that. But I can tell you, we, we welcomed our first uh, furry resident, Miss Harper. So uh, <laughs> we already have our first dog on site. Oh. So. Yeah. Yes, sir. You've got a stage. We have a stage. Yeah. Now, is that going to replace the one at the park for the entertainment? No. Okay. We see this, we envision the lawn area as a complimentary community gathering space. Our park is, is a wonderful facility. We don't want to take away from the activity that goes on there. We have very large bands that come in and fill that area. Uh, you know, we have the skirt game. We have lots of different events over there. This is an acre in size, so it is a smaller venue. It's an opportunity for uh, more casual gatherings as well as just you know smaller events. 
but we do have some amenities here that the park doesn't. So it's complimentary. I was just sort of yep. curious where we had two stages, one across the street from each other. Yeah, it's you know it's it's an opportunity for for different venues. Uh, did anybody attend the Eagles project this summer? Okay, that will not fit here. Okay, um, so there's there's opportunities to utilize both spaces, but we also see this instead of just being used on an event basis, uh, there's going to be daily activities. Uh, you know, we have. We brought in a manager for the uh, for the fitness side of this, and they've talked about having you know outdoor fitness classes, you know, free to the community. They've talked about um, you know having small plays, just just you know just just daily events. So this is not necessarily an event only space. We want this activated on a regular basis. You know, if not daily, certainly you know certainly on a very regular you know frequency. Yes, ma'am. All right. They're going to park on the site. Okay. So uh, it's kind of hard to see here, but this site has 541 parking spaces. Okay. This is Clemmy right here. There's even a bump out here, which has uh, just shy of 100 spaces on it. But there is a kind of car corral parking area in between these units, as well as over here on the east side. And then we have a western parking area for, for the main building as well as here. There's a lot of, you know, when, you know, during the week, you know, when these folks are at work, um, you know, we don't necessarily see it being utilized that, that way, but there's a lot of complementary uses where when some people are gone, other people will be there. Um, oh, I thought you raised your hand. I'm sorry. Well, the yeah. one thing about the lawn that... I'd like to mention is there are, there's electrical outlets so that we can have food truck routes yep. all the way around. So that's just another outside activity. But everything that, that Mr. Miller is talking about in the Cultural Arts Center, those items are a result of plant the pipe gatherings. I don't know if any of you got to go to those meetings initially and you filled out all the papers, all the wish lists and so on. And the things that bubbled to the very top yes. was number one, the swimming pool. It's number one. And when you think about it, you know, we're, we're a little over 12 square miles. We're a little shy of 30,000 residents. And we have Del High, Del Fair, and Overhill Swim Club all in our area. So we are a heavily swim sport kind of community. So this, this went right to the top is something. And then... Oak Hills has a very aged swimming pool. And so their opportunity is landlocked where they are at the high school to build a new pool. So the opportunity to, to come here and be a partner in this pool was perfect for them. And after Seton and Elder saw it, they're like, oh, maybe we would be interested in that. So um, the health fitness, like Mr. Miller said, is a separate outside management team, and they will be responsible for managing the pool time between all the schools they have an opportunity to use. The difference will be Oak Hills is bought in, and the other schools will buy time. My assistant, Trustee CV, everybody. <laughs> yep. So yeah, as, as, as Trustee CV talked about, there are some parallel parking spaces along here, and a lot of those have food truck hookups. So we can bring in food trucks as, a, as an event, and there's actually gonna be removable bollards, you know, uh, lane blockers. So we can install those at the north-south end, and then basically wall-to-wall -wall becomes, you know, pedestrian friendly, so you know, it's safe, you know, safe for the community together. So we'll do that on, you know, a regular, you know, on a regular basis as well. Okay. Uh, there is, so to answer the parking as well, uh, we do have some future expansion available. So the township, in, in order to, to uh, provide sanitary sewer to this site, the township did acquire an additional piece of land over here. Uh, that is a temporary use of that, of that space. Um, we're waiting on MSD to finish a 
uh, a long promised but hopefully shortly funded project downstream and as soon as that is completed we will be able to add an additional 60 to 80 parking spots adjacent to the site. So, yeah, so we're looking forward to that as well. Yes, ma'am. Yep. No, there. Uh, so there is no access. Uh, ju so just like just like the Kmart of old, there is no access to uh, Mount Averno directly. So uh, as a matter of fact, I think that's the Stub Street right there of Shore. Is that how I pronounce it? Yeah. Sure. Yep. Shore. Okay. Uh, you know this parking area up here is almost like a platform. It's elevated. There's no direct access. You know to the south. We do have three access points. So over by Duncan, right here, that's the right in, right out. You guys, I'm sure you're using that all the time to get your coffee. You've got the main entrance right here with the signal. And then we also have Clemmy right here. Clemmy has a, is another light. And just behind Arby's, there's going to be a connector. So another thing I want to bring up about this site real quick. I talked about earlier of being a catalytic site. You know, we want to build excitement in the community. I can tell you we're getting all kinds of calls from both residential and uh, commercial developers looking at other opportunities within the community. There is a developer that has bought an option on the 10 acres between Clemmy and Greenwell looking to do a big residential development. So all of that property is still on option for another year. And the reason that they were interested in that site, they told me, is because the township was investing in this, this site. And they want memberships to our fitness facility. So. so one of the big negatives to trying to get, you know, the wish list for the restaurants, if anybody says Olive Garden, you know, <laughs> <laughs> part of that is you have to build volume. You have to build travel. You have to have people coming through your community to support the restaurant. So what you're seeing is a big opportunity to build that volume that we need to grow other things in other places right here in Delhi Township. So this investment, like was introduced, is a complete investment in our future. And sitting still and not doing anything was never going to grow us. And for like the last three census groups, we haven't grown in population. go through some uh, a few additional slides so this isn't our exact pool but this is the this is the sister site that of, of our facility that was used as the basis what can we approve on for, approve upon from this so this is a very similar size pool um, over in West Claremont let's see this is an example of some of the uh, fitness equipment we'll have in that in that turf area that's just kind of a break out of the, of the space that I kind of already walked through. Same thing, we're looking to, looking to engage, have multiple classes in our, in our uh, different pools. So while this is on a beach, you know, we do envision you know, having those. There's no beach, but we do envision utilizing that turf field outside that lawn to, to engage the public and have those outdoor activities. Okay. We certainly have room for uh, in our in our fitness classrooms uh, for you know fitness activities for all different ages. Okay. Kind of some more examples of the kind of the turf area that we have and the type of equipment. All right. This is one thing that uh, I, I know people talk about. 
the fitness facility, the athletic club, it is a membership driven facility. So these are the current advertised rates uh, on, a, um, on a monthly basis. So there will be a discount for township residents, uh, but everyone from the everyone from the public is welcome to join. Okay. Same thing with the turf area. What's that? Yes. Are you talking at me or her? Uh, you first. Okay. I wondered, is there any elevators for those of us that are so-called handicapped to get up to the second floor? Could you just mention yes. steps? So. <laughs> Uh, let's see here if I can do the layout. Short answer is yes. Both cor uh, both corridors, whether you're on the uh, whether whether you're on the cultural arts center uh, side of the building or the fitness center side, there is an elevator in each one of those corridors. You do not have to take the steps up. Well, I, we pass the ADA compliant yep. regulations. Yeah, so yep. the, the entire building. Yeah, the, yep. the steps. Everything is ADA compliant. That's good. Yep. And I will say there are ADA compliant apartments as well. Are you going to discuss the living uh, areas, the condos, and so forth? Um, so I can I can talk about them in, a, uh, in in some degree. I don't have pictures of them for this, uh, but again, there's 180 units. Um, the first building, again, just got its CO. Each one of the buildings will basically come online roughly a month, month and a half after. Uh, the previous. Uh, we expect full occupancy uh, probably by August, July, uh, possibly. We're actually already at 56% uh, occupancy as far as our leasing. Okay, so these are leasing uh, several months in advance of people actually, um, you know, taking their units. Are they rentals or condos? They are rentals. This is P uh, so our private partner is PLK. Uh, they are rentals. The one bedroom apartment starts at, I believe, $1,100, give or take. Uh, the three bedroom, which is as large as 1,600 square feet, I believe tops out right at $2,100 a month. 